Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is costly signaling. We're still in our unit on economic sanctions, and I said at the start that we would have two different topics inside of that. First, we would look into the methodological issues of looking at cases of imposed sanctions and then making inferences about the effectiveness of economic sanctions based purely on those cases. Well, we're done with that line of inquiry, and now we're on to explaining why sanctions are imposed despite the fact that they're costly. Remember that economic sanctions imply lost trade, and trade creates a surplus. So if we're no longer creating that surplus, then someone is losing out on the deal, which means we need to figure out why these sanctions are occurring despite the fact that they're inefficient. And one explanation that we have for that is that economic sanctions are a form of costly signaling. What is costly signaling? Well, to answer that question, we actually need to take a step back. One recurring theme that we've had throughout this course is the idea of incentives to misrepresent. We see this in a broad variety of contexts, but regardless, what we're seeing is that weak actors in international relations have strong incentives to pretend like they're strong. Strong types, by virtue of their strength, tend to get their way in international relations, and they can effectively deter opposing behaviors that they don't like out of fear from the other side. So if you're a weak actor, you would really like to pretend like you're one of these strong actors to convince other parties, other opponents, to do what you want and get your way. And because there's this incentive, it's very difficult for us in international relations to sit down at a table, for one state to sit across from another state, and for those two states to ask each other exactly how resolved or how much they care about particular issues or how strong they are. And the reason is the idea that talk is cheap. You've probably heard of that phrase before, but if a weak type is just asked, are you weak or are you strong, there's nothing that stops that weak type from lying about its situation and pretending like it's strong. A weak type is very easily able to pretend like a strong type in this case, because all it has to do is say, I'm strong. That's it. That's easy to do. And when we have this inability to communicate information, we know that it leads to all sorts of inefficient behavior. We saw that in the unit on war. Now we're seeing it in terms of economic sanctions. Now, the uncertainty that these sorts of situations create actually has mixed effects. The weaker types can actually benefit because sometimes they'll pretend like they're strong and this will pay off. But on the whole, it's going to be inefficient because, well, the strong types actually do not so good because they can't differentiate themselves from the weak type. And it's obviously bad for the opponent because the opponent doesn't know whether it's facing a strong type or a weak type, so it can't properly calibrate its offers. So this is what happens when it's very easy to communicate information. But fortunately, we're not hopelessly lost. There are some ways every now and then that you can effectively communicate information in international relations, but it requires differing ease in being able to communicate that information. So not all forms of communication in international relations are as easy as just asking me whether I'm weak or I'm strong and me answering that question. In contrast, we could think about costly signals. A costly signal is a signal that some types cannot pay or are unwilling to pay. And when you have that type of signal being sent, this can incredibly reveal types, or more accurately, it can demonstrate that you aren't the most unresolved or weakest of types. And when you're doing that, it allows the opponent to properly calibrate its offer or its decision in how to behave facing off against the type that has been revealed through the costly signal. So that might seem a little bit opaque, but I can apply this to economic sanctions and you might see how this works out. Imagine that we have some sort of uncertainty about a sender's resolve. So the sender is the one who's going to be possibly imposing economic sanctions on the target. Sanctions are costly for the sender. They're also costly for the target, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to focus on the costs of the sender. There might be a variety of different types of senders out there. There might be a sender who cares very, very, very little about the issue, and there might be senders out there who care a great deal about the issue. The thing that's upsetting the sender that the target is doing, that the sender would like the target to stop. So if a sender imposes economic sanctions, even small economic sanctions, not broad embargoes against the opposing country, but perhaps very specific economic sanctions against the target, 
what that's going to do is it's going to force the target to take a step back and think for a moment. If the sender was an actor that did not care very much at all about the issue at stake, it would not be willing to impose even very small sanctions because those sanctions are going to be costly to some degree. And so by virtue of the fact that it observes some form of economic sanctions, again, even if it's minimal, the target is going to update its belief about the type of sender it's facing, and it's going to realize that the sender now, by virtue of the fact that it's seen this signal, is more likely to be a stronger, more resolved type, which is going to be willing to do more to stop the target from doing whatever it is that the sender doesn't like. And so after internalizing this, the target might think to itself, well, shoot, if I don't back down, it's much more likely that I'm going to be seeing even stronger economic sanctions in the future because I'm facing off against now more likely to be a stronger type than I was at the beginning. So I got to be worried that I'm going to see even worse sanctions later on if I continue this behavior. Or I might even be worried about war. This might be the first step toward war, and the reason that the signal is being sent is because the strong types would like to avoid that war, because it's costly for everyone, and so they're trying to reveal that they actually care about the issue enough to fight by sending a costly signal that these less resolved types would be unwilling to pay. And so the reason that we might see economic sanctions occurring, despite the fact that they're inefficient, is that they are less inefficient than would be the alternative, either broad sanctions, like embargoing the entire country, or fighting a war against that country. So economic sanctions might just be used to communicate information because they're costly signals, and so it's an effective form of communication, and that communication will lead to less inefficiency than if they weren't able to send that signal at all. So this is one case where we're looking at what happens when there's uncertainty about a sender's resolve. And in the next lecture, in the next video, we'll be looking at a situation where there's uncertainty about the target. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.